So hi, I'm, I'm Lawrence, it's Christina, and we're from Decision Lab. So we are a, a small um, OR consultancy based in Southwest London. Um, I'm going to talk for uh, 20 minutes about who we are, what we do, what kind of projects we're involved in, and then our kind of company culture. Um, so we kind of operate around three main kind of business units. That is the water industry, um, the power industry, and aerospace and defense. And then we kind of use the three different approaches along this um, optimization, simulation, and data science. Um, so if you came to work for us, um, the kind of questions that we would answer is, how do you optimize London's water supply? How could we model the cost of terrorism? And how could we save millions of pounds whilst keeping planes in the air? Um, so first thing, we've got a quick poll. If you've got your phones um, with the app, the question should come up. So how would you solve these questions? There are no right or wrong answers. You can probably use any of these domains to approach all of the questions. So just choose whatever you think you like most. No data science? I guess you're all really hardcore OR people. <laughs> um, so yeah, as Christina said, there are basically there are no right or wrong answers. Um, in our approach, I think to each of these questions, um, we've taken one of these approaches each. So London water supply is very much an optimization problem that we solve. Um, terrorism, modeling the cost, is quite a data science problem um, using simu well, using simulation. Um, and then keeping planes in the air is very much a data science problem um, that we're trying to solve. So I'm going to go through a couple of the, um, our main projects. So we are involved in a lot of water, water company um, kind of decision-making solvers. So every five years, every water company in the UK has to submit a water resource management plan. Um, and they have to do a plan for at least 25 years to forecast um, how they're going to supply the water in their area. So imagine you have a current supply now of water, you have a demand forecast for the next 25 years, and a pool of options that you can choose from in order to satisfy the deficit. So you could have reservoirs, you could have um, kind of leakage control, you could have ways to reduce demand, increase supply, and we could, um, each of these options will have a yield and a cost, so how much water will it save or create? And how much would that cost? And then what is the least cost way of solving this problem? But then so that was maybe five or 10 years ago. Every five year cycle, we're getting more and more complex in the questions that we're trying to answer. So now we're doing environmental benefit. So how would these options um, affect the environment in a good way, in a bad way? How, how do customers react? So what are customer preferences? Do they like, they like um, leakage schemes, but they really hate desalination schemes? Um, it's like changing salt water into um, potable water. Um, customers think it's an eyesore, they really hate those. Um, and then kind of resilience to drought. So a surface water source um, will react very badly to a drought. Um, and then we're drawing up kind of, um, I've got a visualization tool here to show you there's a kind of a parallel access, parallel access plot. So you have all your different multi-criteria. And we're visualizing them on this scale so you can choose um, between options or between programs to say which is better. And then we're creating these decision support tools to help water companies answer this question. Um, another one of our models that we're, I've, I think we've got a video for, but I'm not gonna show it now. I'm gonna, it's on the laptop on our, uh, on our table um, is modeling terrorism. So we're using a, a simulation suite called AnyLogic, which is built off Java to model um, pedestrians um, and in terrorism incidents. So a suicide bomb, um, gun attacks, 
we can see um, projected mortality rates, police um, response times, and it kind of it's a very investigative model. Um, so come out to our stand, and we'll show you the video about that. I'm going to pass over to Christina for a couple of the projects that she's been working on. So I've been at the company now for over a year. Um, Christina is one of our... So I was a graduate a couple of years ago. She is a graduate new this year, so she's going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that she's been working on. Yeah, so basically I joined about 10 weeks ago, and I think this is the project that I've been assigned to in week two. Um, the first project uh, Lawrence explained was like a conventional terrorist attack, but what if you have an anthrax release somewhere in London? So basically there would be, wouldn't be an explosion, but it would just be chemical particles deposed into the air. We basically um, take, it, take into account all the atmospheric conditions from wind direction, wind speed, weather that they, every, everything you could imagine that could uh, affect the way anthrax would get blown into the air into various parts of the project. And basically here in these pictures you can see what would happen if there was an explosion in, uh, an anthrax release in London at the HSBC building. Based on these things, we were able to calculate the probability of being affected by this um, anthrax release at your location. So basically, insurance agencies would know that um, in that red highlighted part, they would, be, they would have to invest a lot of money uh, to rehabilitate these buildings, to clean them of the chemical particle that the buildings are affected with so that um, people can populate these areas again. So essentially, if there was an anthrax release in London, a quarter of London would have to be evacuated for the next six months, and the insurance company that we're working for would have to calculate, would have to pay money to um, clean all these areas. So we're providing them knowledge on how this particle reacts and how to calculate the costs of um, cleaning up afterwards. Um, and this is something that I've done on on my own together with. Um, support from one of our senior consultants. I, was a, I, I created this from the ground up, and then I also was involved in meetings with the clients where we were like, this is what we've done, this is what else we can do. So you can sort of customize your role with, in a more technical part or a more mathematical modeling part, but you can also go <coughs> speak to the clients, sell your product, get to be excited, um, get to talk to the person that will actually use this after you stop working on it necessarily. Yeah, so as Christina said, because we're such a small consultancy, um, if you come to work for us, you will get to do everything. There is time for um, model development, there is time for client side, um, consultancy basically, and because we're so small, there's no time kind of doing filler tasks. When you start to work for us, you've really do start to work. <laughs> yeah, there is no such thing as you taking just an Excel sheet and working with that. You, you get involved in the part that you think you would be great at, and people just trust you with that responsibility. Um, yeah, so this is the project that we're starting now, and I'm also involved in this time around in a larger team of the data scientists. Um, we're working here with uh, Rolls-Royce and the MOD, the, pl the idea is to be able to keep planes longer into the air. So usually when you have um, planes, but also like uh, ships or anything, they have to be maintained every set amount of time. So every month or every three weeks or everything like that. And if an engineer has to go um, check every single component, there is a lot of idling time in which that plane cannot be used. There are a lot of maintenance costs and there is a lot of time where the, pl yeah, where the plane cannot fly. So essentially, we're trying to um, reduce these costs by predicting when is a component <coughs> of the plane going to fail based on the on time series sensor data. In that way, um, you don't have to have scheduled maintenance anymore. You can just get alerted by the system that we're developing. Um, hey, in the next five flights, the engine might fail. Go check it out. Um, or I think something that we're getting now into is more like telling somebody that is used to making a maintenance every four weeks, don't look at this. This, this is fine. Focus your attention on other components. So it's, it's very cool technical work. We do a lot of like 
new, we, we implement neural networks, state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms. It's, it's okay. beyond cool. <laughs> um, so, why work for us? We are not just Excel modelers. We use so many different tools, like um, for your data science work, you've got R, Python, Amazon Web Services. Um, simulation, we use AnyLogic, which is a, a suite built on Java, so the actual software to use is pretty much like an IDE that's built off Eclipse. Um, we use Ames for optimization, although we're kind of moving towards more Python and kind of in-house um, developed optimization algorithms. Um, other things about our company, we are flexible working. So a um, little map of a lot of places that are definitely not an exhaustive list of places that people in the company have worked from. And so we're based in London. We've got a couple of guys who um, are out in Bristol and Southampton, but then also Athens, Brussels, Lisbon, Barcelona. Um, and we've also had a couple of kind of working holidays where we've gone out and stayed for like a week in an Airbnb, done some work, had some holiday, um, it's been really fun. Uh, another cool thing is that, in my experience at least, your voice is really heard. So for example, we have these research lab meetings every month where basically when you work in your daily job, you realize that this is an aspect of the work that could be done better, the company maybe should focus on this area or on that area. And in these research lab meetings, we gather around all the people from all the locations and everybody's able to say, um, to pitch their idea, like, let, let's do this stuff, let's get into web development, let's deploy our model, let, anything that you feel like it would be important or would be a thing that could help the company, you can pitch it and then people vote for your idea and then your idea actually gets implemented in the company. So to that sense, whatever you say, like if, if I have a need or if you think something could be better, gets heard. Um, beyond that, we also have, you also get a lot of training. So we've had, for example, this Amazon workshops, this Microsoft workshops. I'm currently getting sales training every month. And that's not to say I'm still a very technical person that does um, simulation or data science, but they just asked, do you want to get involved into sales? I said yes, and now I'm going into sales training workshops. And then we're also kind of thought leaders in the industry, so we're running um, a hackathon, which is um, a kind of a hackathon related to the water industry that's happening actually next week. Um, so a lot of different water companies and other consultancies are going to come. We're going to pose a kind of a big data science problem in the water industry and then spend two full days trying to knock together a solution, and there's prizes. Um, a lot of exposure kind of in the water company. The same goes for defense, because uh, there's also going to be sort of a competition where multiple people come. They will have, this is, they will say, this is a problem we face in defense. Can you solve it? <coughs> we have a team and like, we might actually win this. That's <laughs> um, something to end on. Um, as a company, we're also kind of all about having um, socials and a good work-life balance. Um, so I've got a couple of photos from socials we had. Every summer we can have a sports day, um, some drinks on the boat. Um, we did the crystal maze. Um, so there's, there's time for um, life as well as work. Oh,